Let me make something super clear right away. The Fire Phone is undoubtedly one of the worst things Amazon has ever made. It honestly feels like toddlers designed this damn thing. Five years ago, Amazon made a bold move. The Fire Phone. Everyone, including us here at Gizmodo, felt very skeptical at the time. Using the phone in 2019 elicits a different feeling, utter dismay. And so, because I hate myself, I just spent a couple weeks with the device. It was not easy. Five years ago, this device felt different and basically weird. Reviewers also widely panned the device. For good reason, too, because it's utter garbage. This, despite the fact that Jeff Bezos himself led a huge press event to announce the phone, he called it gorgeous, elegant, and refined. It is none of those things. Today, the Fire Phone feels alien and downright shitty. It's such a disaster that Amazon started slashing the price just weeks after launch, and then the company never tried to make a phone again. That's probably a good thing because the Fire Phone is a really, really bad gadget, not just because it's old. With the benefit of hindsight, there are a couple things about the Fire Phone that seem okay. I do still like the idea behind the technology that follows your face as you use the Fire Phone. It's kind of like the parallax effect that came to iOS in 2013, but times a thousand. And everything else I have to say about the device? It's also about how it sucks. Like its closest relative, the Kindle Fire tablet, the Fire Phone uses a heavily modified version of Android. So it's familiar in certain ways, like the fact that there's this basic app layout, but it's way too different in other ways. For instance, you can't just sign into Google and gain access to Google services like Gmail, Maps, and Google Calendar. Everything on the Fire Phone is Amazon specific and somehow compatible with Google, but 10 times worse. The Mail app seems primitive even by 2014 standards, and the Maps app is utter garbage. This trend proves true across the whole operating system. The apps are too poorly built or too feature poor to be useful. It's important to note here that these were complaints mounted by many reviewers back when the phone came out. This is a clear clue that Amazon was fighting above its weight even then. One could still wonder if the Fire Phone was too focused on being an Amazon device, a sibling of the Fire Tablet or the Kindle, rather than a forward-thinking phone. Take this button, for instance. It's not a home button, but rather a way to quickly launch Firefly, well, not so quickly, the Amazon app that lets you scan books or listen to movies and then get a quick link to buy that stuff on Amazon. It doesn't work very well and also makes you wonder who needs to buy stuff so immediately. There was another Fire Phone specific service called Mayday that connected you with an Amazon support person in video, but that was discontinued after the phone launched. Maybe because people didn't buy enough stuff through the help desk. I have no idea. What's inevitably clear today is that Amazon tried way too hard to make a phone that was optimized for Amazon services. The Kindle app, for example, works great. I have no idea how other similar apps might work though because Amazon's App Store is a stripped down, shittier version of the Google Play Store. And I'm almost tempted to make a point about how the Fire Phone was a little ahead of its time. The face watching display was almost a glimpse at what something like Face ID could do, except it ends up just being a useless gimmick on the Fire Phone. And everything else that makes the Fire Phone different also makes it bad. It didn't work out for Amazon then, and frankly, it's embarrassing now.